Hi everyone, I'm Philip from eMusic Bulgaria. Today we invited Dave Mack for an interview. Hello Dave, thanks for accepting the invitation of being our guest today. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm doing good. A little bit tired, but uh, yeah, that's. I have a daughter, so people with good children kind of know where you. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have that those phases where you uh, get a little bit uh, less sleep. But uh, other than that, I'm doing fine. Thank you, and and you yourself as well. Yeah, I'm doing good. I ho I also have a, a kid, so uh, I definitely feel your pain. So uh, <laughs> definitely would like to have. A, have more sleep, but hey, that's life. Yep, okay, that's life. Um, I would like to start with, um, yeah, that important question, at least for me, uh, and this is in regards to COVID, COVID pandemic. Right. Because COVID pandemic caused uh, businesses in every sector to suspend activities worldwide. And yeah. one of the first industries industries to stop uh, was the entertainment business. So um, how did you recover after that? Did the pandemic um, affect your creative process and was your life changed as a, as a producer? Um, yeah, it kind of was. It, it affected me both negatively and positively, uh, funny enough, because... Um, um, yeah, I, I immediately when when the lockdowns happened, and uh, yeah, there was there were a couple of gigs that I was really looking forward to that that got cancelled, and uh, yeah, it was there was a real uh, real bummer, and uh, other things that that really um, were yeah kind of planned also uh, yeah got cancelled. It basically just yeah yeah basically kind of. Um, Decided to um, re yeah change my focus on, on other stuff that I was already doing because I have the the YouTube YouTube channel yep. and um, I was also teaching one person I think at that time and uh, maybe two um, so I was kind of, yeah really thinking okay what can I do with my time other than focusing on my live setup and, and production stuff and uh, so i really started to, to focus a little bit more on the channel um yeah creating more music and i still had a day job next to that so it was um financially i, I kind of was uh, it was all yeah there was not much change in that, that regard um but then uh, then i found actually time to to create the um, the courses that i do for uh, digitax and that um, there was something I had in mind like two years before already. People really was, were asking like, how do you create those sampling uh, sampling grooves that I create with my, um, I record stuff in the city and stuff. And then I create a complete tr techno track with the, only those samples. And a lot of people wanted to see the, the detailed pro process with that. Uh, but I thought, yeah, I can't put that in one video of 20 minutes or something. That's not going to work. That's to really explain how I do that. Uh, I need to take a few hours probably so i wanted to do a course and people were really interested in that so that that was actually the the, the pandemic, pandemic forced me to uh uh yeah uh start recording those basically and then it really took off they they, they sold well enough for me to go full time uh and uh, a lot more people wanted to um um i, I teach also about 10 students um and started with three, four, and then during the whole pandemic, yeah, it's kind of the more people were sitting at home, right? So they they uh, decided to take lessons in, in music productions, and I already had yeah wanted to do that anyway, and I had in, in my description in my YouTube channel. So through my YouTube channel, they they um, uh, they asked me uh, to to coach them basically, and then uh, yeah, that plus the, the courses and some sound picks that I created during that time. Um, um, Made it possible for me to, to give up my day job and also take the leap. It's always a little, a little bit of a leap, but um, yeah. So it, that, that was the positive side. The, the negative side, of course, the no no gigs happening. Um, everything is online, which is different, you know. Um, yeah. So it, it's a very uh, weird weird time. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, talking about your courses, um, I immediately yeah. I'm switching to Electron Gear somehow. So tell me, tell me more about your life setup right now. Uh, so what are you currently using? Maybe syntax. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I, I I totally switched up 
to a different setup right now. So I at first um, uh, use mostly Electron gear together with my uh, Zone DB4 that I really, really like um, because it's basically a laptop uh, substitute some some some, some sorts. So I use it. I, I at one point had two Digitex and do, two Digitones and an analog heat and, and a DB4 and then I kind of switched things up a little bit with uh, one Digitex, one Digitone and then an Octatrack and a heat. And then Syntax came, so it became Digitech, Digitone, Syntax, and Octotrack. And I had this pedal board where I put everything up. It was pretty cool. It looks looks really nice. But, um, yeah, I kind of, like a month ago or one, I think two months ago. Yeah, somewhere in the beginning of this year, three months ago, probably. I kind of decided that I wanted to... Um, um, improvise more during a live set. So basically how my setup was uh, um, structured was I had grooves, so basically sort of loops that really work well, and then I arranged them live. Uh, so that was kind of the improvisation thing, and I, I mixed them together and morphed them into different other grooves and kind of mixed um, different parts of different grooves together, etc. But now, yeah, I, I switched to completely improvisational uh, techno, which uh, uh, has been so much fun. It's uh, the, the best choice I've made in, in uh, yeah, live gigging because I kind of noticed myself always taking a little bit of the safe route when I gigged, and it also felt like I had put so much time in those grooves that it, I don't know, I really like to hear new stuff constantly. That's really, yeah. So, uh, yeah, now I'm using uh, those Erica Sins Pericons. Uh, which is amazing. And um, this is kind of the centerpiece. And then a Syntax, a Digitex, and a Tenta Music Lemon Drop, the granular synthesizer, the little one, mm -hmm. yep. together with a... Um, um, it's the Intex Studio Grid. I don't know. It's it's uh, yeah. It's a small mini controller with uh, yeah, four yes. headers and four... Yeah, I get the, the, these are these yeah, little yeah. guys. You can yeah, kind of snap yeah. them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, so I use <laughs> I ordered four, but I only use one <laughs> for the for the the uh, the lemon drop. Um, and then I use an RK 6 from RetroKit, which is kind of a super MIDI hub. You can connect a, a USB hub to it and connect the USB controllers and media controllers and send clock and yeah, send it to up to 10 uh, uh, machines at the same time. Works great. Um, so that's, and, and the, the quadranded swarm, um, uh, which what, is a weird, that, it's a, a quadranded swarm. Uh huh. Okay. It's a weird little semi-modular uh, synthesizer. It's it's this big and it's um it's it has two filters in series and uh, it's yeah it's hard to explain. It's a very strange strange device, but it, it sounds really really good. And um, yeah. so that actually sounds like a lot of gear, but it's really compact. The, the the kind of the idea was to be able to take it with me on the plane. Uh, as hand luggage, and I can. So the mixer that I use now is the Zone 96 because uh, I can put that on my rider um, so that yeah, the venue can probably um, take care of that or the 92 would work as well. But the DB4 I have to bring with me and it's just yeah, a bit too bulky. So I really try to make things as compact as possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it is what we just discussed right now is strictly hardware. But uh, are you using any software in your music production? Um, most yeah, kind of as a tape recorder. So the DAW is basically my tape recorder now, um, and I tend to mostly record in stereo files. Um, so I don't I don't do a lot of DAW productions anymore. Every now and then I do a remix or something, and then I. I yeah, record something in the DAW on multiple channels, and then, but yeah, and I had a couple of other tracks that I tried to work on in a DAW anymore, and I got into the same tweak mode that I actually kind of loathed after a while, and that's one of the reasons I went uh, full hardware, really. So yeah, not a lot of software. I, I do have an iPad that I tr I still have this plan to try and yeah use it as sort of an effects multi-effects unit uh, which could be interesting so maybe someday but um yeah not not a lot of software no isotope stuff is awesome though that's that's one thing yeah yeah um yeah 
I know you like sampling places and create music uh, from those sounds. I guess you still love to do it because I've seen a video on your YouTube channel um, recently about sampling a coffee machine, which was kind of interesting <laughs> to me because what you made out of it, I mean, like sound-wise, it was really, really nice. Really Thanks. Touched, techno sounding really good, really good. So um, yeah, um, what about the sampling? process you you still love it yeah definitely yeah i recorded a bunch of those videos together with a, an intern that, that uh, helped me record them which is really nice so we recorded about six seven or eight or something of them. i still have a couple of that i that i need to finish so there's more coming and it really it's the most it's the most laborious type of video i mean it takes me if i do it alone it probably takes me 40 hours to create one of those videos which is ridiculous but it's it's also a lot of fun because it's the whole sampling process and um and, and i always create a sample pack yep that for the most part i try to give away for free unless it was really a lot of work and i ask a little bit uh, for it but um I, I, I yeah i definitely plan on, on keep doing those and kind of make, yeah i want to take that that kind of um idea to the next level for the videos for next year so uh, uh i'm still thinking a little bit what i can do with that format because it, it doesn't get as much views as my tutorials and stuff but it's definitely the most unique content i think of my channel and then the people that see it are always enthusiastic about it so i'll definitely keep doing those and i use the samples in my live set as well right now so that's cool yeah definitely yeah. Uh, i think i was starting following following you exactly with the sampling videos so definitely really an interesting stuff so can't wait cool. to see the other videos that you are preparing you are yeah. to, to upload in youtube on your youtube channel so uh now let's start with one more abstract question like what if you are like able someday to make your perfect studio what would it look like <laughs> like this now no, the perfect like the, the i already have a pretty nice studio that i built myself uh together with a dude that a friend of mine that designs studios so um um i already have a very nice yeah studio so i really like it but it's um it, the next level would be um I, I don't know if you know northward studios um do you know no no do you know noisy the drum yes. bass uh, yes, yes. artist yeah, yeah check out what kind of studio they have. That's just a completely next level. It's it's super expensive as well. I mean, it's totally out of my league, but it's it, it's good to dream to have dreams. But those are they have three identical studios, <laughs> and they are in sort of a, a small containers. They're not containers; they're actually rooms. But they they are put on huge springs, like three incredibly huge springs. Uh -huh. So those whole rooms are resting on three huge springs completely um uh, de detached from the floor and then inside it's just yeah that's next level beauty in, in studio design and the northward um designer also uh, creates studios where he has um glass windows basically where the speakers uh are mounted into and they kind of uh, hang from huge steel cables so you actually sort of have floating speakers that are not touching any surface so that that provides probably you yeah a, a very cool nice uh, sound as well probably uh it looks insane <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. one can yeah. dream yeah. Yeah, of course of course we can do that <laughs> it's free um yeah. okay. <laughs> speaking speaking of of, of a dream studio and uh, maybe we should uh, talk about pieces of gear that um maybe you can you can have in that studio so uh if you could only have like a few of them few pieces of gear what would they be and how many, and how many <laughs> what, yeah. what is a few yeah maybe maybe just 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 count let's let's say three of them three three pieces of gear yeah. okay i definitely would choose um dig attacks um yeah, I want to say perk ones, but uh, if you only have three choices, oh man, that's, yeah, it's pretty difficult. I think uh, I think dig attacks for sure. Um, yeah, dig it on probably because it's very versatile. Okay, for now, electron is definitely a winner. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sampling, right? With big attacks, uh, you could also say octo track, but I, I just like the really quick workflow of big attacks for some reason. I don't know. And, and, and also, also song modes, like uh, since yesterday, so definitely yeah. improvement for all the digi boxes. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a nice, nice upgrade. Yeah, I'm personally not a big song mode user per se. I really like to, mm. but I, I try to do some creative stuff with it. And it's you can actually use it as a sort of an extra sequencer layer, which is pretty cool. But I think, um, yeah, Digitex, Big Zone probably. And um, I need to have a effects processor of some sort. I don't know. Some, uh, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's say the 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 the, 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 the lemon drop because it has a delay and reverb and it's a granular thing and it's, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Macintosh or Windows? What do you prefer? <laughs> Both. <laughs> My answer is yes. <laughs> I, I it really doesn't matter much because each has their pros and cons. Yeah. I worked with both for many, 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 many years. Um, Windows I really like because it's just, um, uh, it doesn't really force you to do anything. Uh, it's a bit more open. Um, and the, the, the Windows Explorer and stuff is really good. Uh, Windows 11 is, is very, very good, I think. But the Mac is nice because the audio routing in most cases is just way more flexible than ASYO on the, on the Windows, which is pretty strange that it's that Windows still uses ASYO as their, um, it's the only thing you can do in, on Windows. It still baffles me a little bit that there's no improvement in that whole range. While with Mac, you can run, I, I can use one, uh, the same audio interface in multiple programs at the same time without any issue. That's impossible in Windows, basically, more or less. Um, so that that's definitely one of the con uh, pros, and then, yeah, Mac is forces you a little bit too much, I think, into okay, this is how we do it, and, and you have to to work like that. But I don't want to. You yeah, have to. I don't want. You have to. So that's a bit uh, that that's Apple. Um, yeah. So it it you know you can make music with both, so it doesn't really matter. I agree. So um, speaking of Macintosh versus Windows, so what is your digital audio workstation of choice? Uh, Studio One Ableton uh, currently, and I, I used to um, use uh, Logic for a very long time. Um, so basically, those yeah, Studio One and, and, and Ableton are the, the main things that I use currently. And I, I still have this plan in my mind to use Ableton, as, set it up as a sort of a modular synth, so I can just for sound design purposes to throw in a sample and then it, it spits out something insane or something. I don't know. Maybe someday if I have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what audio interface are you currently using? Uh, the, the uh, SSL Big Six, the 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 the, the, the yeah, the mixer from uh, SSL. Um, are, you, are you happy with it? You like it? Yes. Yeah, really, really like it. It's um, I, I have to, I have so many different things I do in the studio. I, I teach, and then I have to switch to video making, and also my live set and stuff. And it's really a hybrid way of working. And there's, I think it's one of the few, or maybe the only uh, mixer slash audio interface that has such a flexible um, routing between DAW and, and the mixer itself, uh, which is really wonderful. So I have everything, con I can connect everything pretty easily. I have kind of a system in my studio where I can just grab something and connect it, and it's then in the mixer and I can route it in, into my DAW instantly. Um, and there's, I don't have a specific setup on my desk, like, um, um, yeah, a, a setup that's always connected. I have to be able to disconnect something and reconnect something every day. And for that, it's, it's just wonderful uh, how easy it's uh, to work with. So I can never really recommend it. It's not cheap, but it sounds incredible. And it's, it's uh, the audio interface is really good. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, could you recommend any sources of, of information, anything that you're following right now, any YouTube channels, et cetera, et cetera? Um, yeah, so, yeah, because I've, I've, I've been into the, the, the improvisation, um, yeah, the, really just winging it, basically, setting up some gear and just 
sequencing everything from from the from the ground up. So the whole, whole improvisation thing, uh, uh, it was really scary for me. But the, the the one person that really made me feel like okay, I I can do this uh, was a, a surgeon, okay. DJ surgeon, because he has been doing this for many years now, for uh, I think eight or nine years or something. And he he has all these talks on YouTube, and uh, also he has a, had a podcast with Myler Melodies, which is also a very nice channel. And another a couple of other podcasts that he did interviews, and he has a really interesting look on, on improvisation and a really relaxed view. Like, yeah, it things can go wrong, but he actually kind of likes that as well when it goes wrong. And he has this really, um, yeah, relaxed vibe about it, and uh, that really gave me confidence. Like, I, I just have to do it. It's so much fun, and the scary bit that's that's going to be fine. Um, and yeah, just a very um, seems like a very cool guy, very informed. A lot of information he gives in, in those talks, so I can really recommend if you want to go that improvised uh, route. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely will check the information that uh, he's yeah. sharing. Seems uh, seems like it's like good one. Um, yeah. One last question. Anything else that you want to mention? Where we can find you? your courses, your music, and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dave Mac, um, where I share all my sampling endeavors and tutorials and stuff. And uh, I have a website, davemac.live, and there you find a shop in my artist page. So davemac.live slash shop, you can find free sample packs, but also sample packs that, uh, that are paid but a bit more, um, um, yeah. They're mostly a bit bigger. And courses for Digitech and Digitone. I'm actually uh, starting production for the Digitone part two, which is going to be uh, pretty cool. And then I'm going to start with the Syntech. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that, but we'll see. But uh, I keep going to create those because it's a lot of fun to do. And um, yeah, Instagram slash Dave Mac live. Uh, yeah, that's basically it, really. Yeah. Dave, thank you very much. Oh, so nice. Uh, thanks uh, for having me. See ya.